As a child of the 70s in the United States, I grew up with a common but perhaps slightly distorted view of love, at least one that was too narrow. That's how I see it now. Thinking back, love had sort of three possible usages. Uh, the first one was about experiences or things, like I love building with Lego bricks, or I love jumping up in the ocean waves, or I love eating pizza with everything on it. And then there was the love used with family and relatives that usually involved perfume kisses from aunts and grandmothers and tousled hair from uncles and grandfathers. It was still, uh, this love became a little awkward to share with others, but it was part of the ritual of family, and it was okay. And there was the one true love. This was the idea built from fairy tales and cultural and religious expectations around relationships and marriage that said that there was one other person out there for you, and that person was very special, and you would know it. And the reality is we don't always know it, and... I spent a lot of time trying to figure out, is this person the right one or not? And there's a bit of, I don't know, trepidation around rejection. Like, should I share my love for another? Would they reject me? And so there were these three ideas of love that I had, and the narrowness of it meant that there wasn't room for, I guess, a love of friends, this brotherly love that we're examining today. But I did make it through my 20s and 30s. I found ones to love and ones to love me back. And yet, as I said, I still had this narrow definition of love. What a straitjacket I was in. This changed, or began to change for me, in a men's group, where I was able to expand my definition of love for others and also for myself. He was the consummate biker, shaved head, tats, leathers, and that night he bravely shared his anger and sadness about the circumstances in his life. After his sharing, the rest of the circle surrounded him and with his permission began cradling him as he experienced his sadness and grief. Years before, I would have been afraid of this kind of man, but in that circle at that moment, I felt I could hug him, look him in the eye, and see all of who he was. I could even tell him that I loved him. Now, this was a whole different kind of love. It didn't mean that he was family. It didn't mean that he was the one. But it meant that I saw in him a reflection of myself, that I could feel and own my own anger and sadness. And in witnessing his humanity as one man to another, as one human being to another, a human being to another, I felt a deep sense of affection and warmth for him. So from that moment, I began to pay close attention to the times when I was with people whom I felt a deep sense of connection and with whom there was a common language that provided a gateway for sharing ideas and experiences that were effortless, open, and honest. Emerson, a 19th century orator and Unitarian minister, describes this type of friendship, this feeling of filio or brotherly love, in his essay called Friendship. A friend is a person with whom I may be sincere. Before them I may think aloud. I am arrived at last in the presence of one so real and equal that I may forego even those undermost garments of dissimulation, courtesy, and second thought, which we never put off, and may deal with them with the simplicity and wholeness with which one chemical atom meets another. The simplicity and wholeness with which one chemical atom meets another. This kind of friendship, this kind of love that Emerson described, exists where people can be real and present with each other, sharing both amazing joys and highs, and also the most gut-riching sorrows and lows, without any nervous laughter, or without any minification of what one or the other is feeling. Before this men's group, I don't believe that I was really ready to be fully present with another. And I don't know that I was really ready to be fully present with myself either. And so I see this moment as a spiritual turning point. A time when I was able to 
feel more compassion toward others and thus more compassion toward myself. And in doing so, be able to fully communicate how I was feeling to someone else, to even tell them that I loved them. It's only the most human thing and the greatest commandment of all the spiritual traditions.